Technology isn't a term to say, let's replace in person or let's replace church attendance. It's enhancing your ability to engage with them so that you have more authentic engagement going forward. This is Equip and Engage, a podcast by Subsplash, exploring how ministry, technology, and innovation come together to equip churches around the world to engage their communities. Hi and welcome. I am Carolyn Farney, one of your hosts for today, and I am joined by my friend, co-worker, Aww. Chris Sharp. Chris, Hi, how are Carolyn. you doing? Oh, so good. I'm so excited. So am I. We are really excited to be here with you. We partnered together with over thousands of ministries, really wanting to help them thrive, not just check a box when it comes to digital engagement. So with that, we hope to share conversations we've had and things that we've learned and bring them to you. And that's what, as we dig into what these episodes are going to be about and what you can come to expect, is more of what we're going to talk about. Yeah. But before we jump in there, I thought we could take just a brief time, since we're going to be with you the okay. next couple episodes, to allow you guys to get to know us a little better. And what better way than with some fun facts? So hmm. first off, Chris Sharp, <laughs> VP yes. of Business Development here okay. at Subsplash, he has an uncanny ability to remember middle names and school mascots. Right. Uh, I would say better with the mascots. And uh, I don't know your middle name, Carolyn. So <laughs> my apologies for the immediate letdown. Also, <laughs> also, you came to Subsplash because of a failed music career. Yeah. I find that pretty funny. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. One of the things I was working in ministry, but I was also doing um, recording music. And at some point, you just realize you got to be a lot better, <laughs> a lot better and made the transition to a startup, which yeah. was a, a great move. But uh, I, it did lead to a very failed jingle career as well. You so still this find is them good. on Spotify. Good to be back on. You yeah, can still yeah. stream them on Spotify. Thank you for that. I, I, would, I would love it. If I get 10,000 clicks, I make a cent. So <laughs> contribute to the cause. Let's make him a yeah. dollar. Yes, let's okay. do it. Now, Carolyn, uh, fun fact, she is from the Crossroads of America, which for those of you who don't know, now. Indiana. Indiana. And uh, came to Hoosier. Seattle. You're a Hoosier. Well, I'm yeah. actually a Boilermaker. Okay. If you know the rivalry I with do. in Indiana. I do. I okay. do. Because those are mascots in okay. college. Yeah. But uh, Carolyn came here because she was going to be a national champion volleyball player. Carolyn, <laughs> how about it? Way to go. <laughs> oh, you became thanks. a national champion. Thanks. I'm what they call a team player. Yeah. A that's good. <laughs> but you know what's nice? As a team player, you still got a championship and yeah. we're all successful, not a failed volleyball, where successful volleyball careers go is. Uh, church technology. I love it. It's I the love natural it. natural transition. <laughs> that is such a great transition. Yeah. So, so let's hear about it. Yeah. So I thought maybe we could share a little bit about just what we're excited about here for this podcast. Perfect. Yeah. I'm just excited about focusing on innovation. What does it mean with, with when we talk about technology, there's technology isn't just uh, what's on your computer or your phone. Technology is leveraging the latest to, to make changes, to have enhancements, to have real innovation. And when we look at the church, our call is to make disciples. So what are we doing to authentically make disciples? Yes. And there's a lot of traps. There's a lot of pain points. There's a lot of things that come up. For example, you know, we have a lot of churches that would, they, they would coin the term paper cut Wednesday. What does that mean? It's the day where you're folding bulletins and you know you're going to get a paper cut or two, right? And nothing <laughs> against bulletins. Paper is, is not entirely irrelevant. Right. That's not the point. The point is that is a tool that many, many churches use. We've worked with thousands that yes. use bulletins, yes. and it's a great tool. However, what is the point of that bulletin, and what are people doing with it? So when you think about a bulletin, you're trying to communicate your latest event. You're trying to gather information on a form. Would you like to get connected to our ministry? Maybe maybe uh, uh, make a donation to our uh, community, right? Those are great items, but there's better ways to do that today because when I walk into a church and I'm handed a bulletin, I first and foremost, I actually reject Mm. it. I say, no, thank you. (laughs) Uh, Once in a while, they're really good at sales. So get good greeters if you want them to have that bulletin. But then even if I take it, what am I doing with it? Yeah. What do I do at Does the end of that? Does it make it out of the yeah. sanctuary? Uh, probably not. Or out of the minivan. Yeah, or out of the minivan. Probably in the minivan with some fishy crackers. Yeah. But what happens is uh, some of you have a recycle bin for your bulletin, which uh, wonderful, very eco-friendly. However, if that's not a sign of its relevancy uh, than anything else, it's it's good for some. But most people, you're going to throw it away. You're going to recycle it. You're going to give it back. You're going to leave it in your car, and uh, for for those of you out there that take it home and scrapbook, bless your heart, and congratulations, <laughs> you're the winner. That's really, really good. But what are we doing at the rest of it, and what are the ways yes. that people are communicating today? Yes. That's yeah. what we want to focus on. Yeah. That's just an example. Yeah, yeah, and even another example that comes to mind, we hear ministries talk about their summer slump. Right. So, 
you know, they're going they're going about into the summer <clears throat> families are going on vacations they're they're out and about they're not there if they've only been collecting tithes and off the offerings through say a bucket that they're passing mm-hmm. that now they hit the summer and it becomes this slump that they're saying hey we we're really trying to get uh, from a financial standpoint to be able to stay afloat we need right. a big fall push where one thing that we've seen with ministries that even as we help roll out things like a modern giving solution that they can give even if they're not in the building, uh, even tools around uh, things like a mobile app or ways that they can engage with them more while they're out, uh, whether that's through media, whether that's through encouragement, whether that's through Bible reading plans and staying connected, Mm -hmm. that they're able to, in different ways, avoid that summer slump. That's right. Yeah, because as a church, you're a content creator. And you have an audience. And even though attendance may be down, it might be the summer, it might just be regularly, as there are trends in our nation, in generally here in America, where we see, you know, maybe the average attendee is two times a month now. Uh, What are you doing to still connect to and engage with them? You've got content, you're trying to help them become a disciple. Technology isn't a term to say, let's replace in person or let's replace church attendance. It's enhancing your ability to engage with them so that you have more authentic engagement going forward. So those are, that's a great example. And the types of things that we, we want to talk about in this podcast and just see how are we helping churches take that next step? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do we help them take that next step? And even as I start to kind of encompass to just what the heart of Subsplash is as well, as we think about media and innovation mm-hmm. and technology and, you know, I'm I, what comes to mind for me is we are in a day of age right now where when it comes to communication, you and I can be having this conversation right. in person. We could pull up our phones, FaceTime in someone from halfway around the right. world. It's being recorded right now. It, people can watch this outside of just this time and date that we're mm-hmm. recording this, that it, we've just passed outside of, of time and space in some very unique ways. And us as Christians, we have arguably the one thing every human needs, which is the answer to sin and death That's found right. in Jesus. And as we think about, okay, we have this gospel message, we're holding this sacred and true, and how do we get this out to the ends of the earth? And as we're thinking about the Great Commission, and one of the places that we want to even discuss is throughout these next episodes of how do we take the means by which, so media and technology in different ways, to be able to to pass this on to the next generation right. and and take those, use whatever means possible in order that we might win some, as yep. Paul says in Corinthians. Love so it. Yeah, and that's where, for us, as we think about how do we glorify God, yeah. proclaim Jesus as Lord, and for us in, in our company, getting to focus on innovation. And what that means is how are we reflecting the creator to help you become more effective in your ability yeah. to make disciples? That's yeah. what it's all about, yeah. doing, doing that with, uh, with humility and innovation and excellence. And that's what we want to focus on on a daily basis. So through the remainder of these podcasts, yeah. there's going to be a lot of them. They're going to be great. We hope you stay tuned. Carolyn, what are some of the other questions that are going to be coming up through that process? So we're going to give you a little sneak peek here so that you guys can, can get excited about what's coming down the road. Some of the questions that we're going to start to answer. So how technology supports your mission? How do you minister to different generations? So we get that quite a bit of, hey, I've got a church of millennials. How do I reach them? Or, hey, we're a traditional church. We have older members. Mm -hmm. How does that all blend? We're excited to dig into that. How does the church stay innovative in this very tech-centric culture? Right, which is really uh, one of the yeah. underlying keys of everything. What's your digital strategy for today? Yeah. It won't always be about an that. iPhone or about mobile, I love that. but that is today. So what's your strategy for that? And then how are we preparing you for the next what's yes. next? Yes, yeah. exactly. And that really falls in line with then how do we hold those tensions between technology and innovation and modernization and tradition? So how do those all, all hold together? And then, of course, talking about church planners wanting to to have content that's that's helpful in that context. How do we localize technology for a mega church? That's a been right. a big thing that that we communicate with a lot of ministries about. So those are just some of the few. And Chris, maybe you can talk about even give the tease for the next episode here. That's right. Yeah. So next one, we're just going to be talking about the value of technology in the church today. What specifically are the main things you can be using for the now? the now and present. We're excited to dive into that. So stay tuned. Yes, stay tuned. We hope you'll join us for these and that you can even uh, go and subscribe to this podcast. And if you've thought of a friend or a colleague in ministry that you think would benefit from these two, 
tell them about it. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for tuning in to Equip and Engage, where we're sharing insights learned from thousands of conversations with leaders and pastors around the world. To follow along with these conversations, subscribe today or visit our website.